got a fun one for us today. So today we're going to be testing out Llama 3.2 vision model. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk problem statement. So what we're looking at is I need to do some optical character recognition, a really basic task that computers have been able to do since the 70s and 80s. Um, but in this example, I need to run a price tag from a supermarket into a model that gives me some really nicely structured data that I can put straight into a database. So no need for post processing or checking. I'm hoping the model will just be good enough to give us exactly what we need. So here's an example of optical character recognition using some of the free models available on Hugging Face. Um, and when I run this price tag through, what we get back is we get 229. Um, it hasn't really detected that, you know, $2.29 because there's no decimal place. Um, it's got the product correct. Um, it's got the each correct. So that's really good. Um, and it's got the SKU or the product um, ID there as well, which is really handy. So let's go ahead and test that out using Llama 3.2 Vision, the latest and greatest in uh, local, you know, AI models. Now to get started, what you're going to want to do is make sure you've got Olama installed, Mac, Linux, and Windows, hit that install button, hit the download button, then follow the install instructions. Once that's installed, um, that's now available on your computer. And what you need to do is you need to head over to your terminal um, or your command prompt, depending on your operating system, and run Olama pool Llama 3.2 vision. Once you do that, you've now got the model available and you can start running queries against it. Now we're going to be querying this image here, um, which I have saved in the same directory as the Python notebook, which I'm about to show you. Um, and it's, it's called test underscore one dot JPEG from memory. I'll double check that. Um, and we're about to query uh, this, this Llama model. So before we go any further, you will notice that we are importing Olama. Now that's a package that you do need to install. And to install that one, you're going to want to head over to uh, make sure you got pip install Olama. So run that one in your Python environment. And that's going to install um, Olama. So you can start interacting with all these different models straight away. So super easy. Um, and so to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to take this sample code um, and we're going to paste that one in. And it says, what is in this image? Now, the image we're interested in is this one here. And I've actually saved that in the same directory as test underscore one. So this just says, what is in this image? Um, who knows what it's going to come back with? But what, where we want to get to is we want to have a structured output. So I won't query with that just yet. I'll just run with the what's in this image that's running now. Um, this is running on a MacBook Air. So this might actually take, who knows, 10 seconds, 10 minutes. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to fast forward this bit. Oh, okay. It's done. That's awesome. Um, what do we got? This image shows an avocado display at a grocery store. There are two cardboard boxes with green paper liners under them, which appears to be filled with avocados. Mm, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> More information than I need. Um, where are we? Avocados. The price tag on the front of the box reads $2.29 each and says has avocado. A sticker on the side of the box indicates that it's a product of Australia. God, this is good. Um, yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. Now let's clean that up a little bit because remember our problem statement's a little bit different. I want to be able to go around the supermarket, take pictures of price tags and have it end up in my database. So I need really basic structured data. So why don't we go ahead with something like, and I've got something I prepared earlier. So I'm just going to quickly update this and talk you through it. So what we've got is something like this, provide me a JSON output. Um, of this Audi supermarket price tag. The price is at the top left, which it kind of already knows. The product name is below the price. The SKU is at the bottom right, and that's this one here, that little number there. So the product ID, which would become useful in our database later as a unique identifier of the product. Um, and then I'm gonna give it an example of that JSON payload. So something really simple, two key values, product name, price, and SKU. So let's run that through. Uh, and let's see how we go. Uh, while it's, that's running, let's quickly talk through what these messages actually mean. So you'll notice here that the messages is a Python list. Um, and inside that list, we've got a dictionary. And we can actually have multiple um, sort of dictionaries. Um, you'll notice that the user, sorry, the role is user. Uh, there's also a role called assistant, which is what we sort of get back. And the other one is a system message, which will allow us to do cool things like say, hey, you're only allowed to provide JSON data in case it, you know, it sort of doesn't. So it's come back to us. Let's have a look at that response. So the response here, what we're interested in is probably the, where are we, message, I reckon. And inside the message, we're probably interested in the content. Okay, so let's grab the content there. And straight away, 
it's not too bad. Um, it's got a bit of preamble. So it's saying here is the JSON output for the Audi supermarket price tag. Um, let's, I don't want that. And we're going to fix that in just a minute. But first, let's see how well it's done at actually getting the product name. So has avocado is correct. Price 229 is correct. And that skew, if I'm not mistaken, is correct. OK, awesome. That's perfect. Now, if it had returned just this bit here, we would be perfect. This would be fantastic. That can go straight into our MongoDB or I can convert it into a table database with product name, you know, price and SKU. I can add my own dates and stuff in there as well. So let's see if we can get this thing to return only JSON. So one way we can do that, um, let's do it at the end of this one with a only return JSON. Okay, let's try that. We're asking it here to only return the JSON um let's see how it went and again it sort of failed um sh sure here is the json now again i could do some database clean i could do some cleanup right i can i can clean up that text pretty easily i can probably do like a a split mm, split by probably a slash n and then pick the last item in that list and you know there it is that's not too bad right and i can do something like you know import json and json dot loads um and that works, right? I've now got my, what I'll call the product payload. Okay. Um, and if it was consistently doing that, I'd be pretty happy with that. But my, my concern is that the JSON isn't always going to be at the very end of, of the text. It might, it might be in the middle and it might say something at the end, like, is there anything else I can help you with? And we can test around that. But ultimately what I want to do is I want to try to get consistent JSON being returned every time. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to update the messages and we're actually going to add another dictionary at the start and that dictionary is going to have a role and some content but the difference this time round rather than be a user we're actually going to call this one system and in here I'm going to say something along the lines of you are part of an automated machine to machine interface only valid JSON no other text outputs all right and so if we give it that it does make me wonder if we will get back running now. Might need to fast forward, see how long it takes. Um, I'm really hoping we get back just that JSON object. So let's have a look at that one. I don't know why I got rid of that. Let's grab that one. Okay, let's have a look. Perfect. Okay, it's kind of nailed it. So now when I do JSON.loads directly on that one, we've got it. So now we can be querying things like what's the price? Perfect. Okay, that's working really well. Um, look, that's all I wanted to show you. I'm just having a bit of a play. Um, I'm, I'm learning lots myself. Uh, all this stuff is really new, right? And that's a crazy thing about AI. It really does come back down to the language you use and how you prompt. Um, the whole Python thing, it's pretty short amount of code. We've got a couple of lines here and all of a sudden we've got a working system where potentially here's a supermarket that doesn't publish their prices online. I can now walk around, take a few pictures um, and then just send them to an API endpoint that I can build. Um, that will convert that into a JSON payload and save it into a MongoDB or some sort of database. Look, if this was at all useful, um, if you found this interesting or you do want to learn more, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much.